a thing, uh, then it's, it's going to be a lot tougher for you to do business. Please tell me that, uh, have I been streaming? Have you been watching me now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Now I'm live. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm learning this new process. Okay. So anyway, I think I'm live now. Uh, and golly. Okay. Can someone, Raymond or whoever's watching live right now, did you see what I was just talking about or do I need to start over? <laughs> okay, so I know how to get on TV, YouTube Live, I'm still kind of a noob here. Okay, so let's just assume, I'll cover what I just talked about uh, before I hit go live. Uh, and if you're watching this on demand, you're like, this guy is just completely out of his element here. I am, I'm completely out of my element. I'm learning this as we go. All right, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to get in the TV. And by the way, uh, if you did happen to see the past seven minutes where I thought it was streaming live, but somehow you magically did see it, you can skip the next five minutes. Okay, but let me lay some foundation. I'm gonna be talking about how to get TV, how to get on TV and why you need to do that. I've been on TV more than 700 times over the past 12 years, and I'm going to go through and talk about how exactly uh, I was able to get my first TV segment how I got on Chicago uh, TV there a few times, uh, how I've done national TV a bunch of times, uh, and then locally, I'm actually, I've been, I, I work with, I've been on four different TV stations, uh, uh, more than 650 times alone, uh, just in Central Florida. And so I'll talk about like how that came to be, how I did that, what exactly I said, who I reached out to, what I had to have um, in advance so that I could get that. All right, excited. All right, 2,000 books. All right, thank you, Manny. I appreciate that. Excited to learn this. All right, so now I need to tell you that this video, I wasn't planning to do this, but I want to say thank you to everybody who asked me very specifically that said, Josh, what I want to learn is you say you've been on TV 700 times. How did you do that? And uh, what exactly you said? So that's what I'm going to cover. Um, before I do that, I need to talk about why. Why would you bother going on TV? Because some people might say, well, that seems like a lot of work. Why would I do that? Um, I'm just going to build my social media audience because, like, you know, Instagram is where it's at. Instagram is a very great place to be right now. Like, we're really into Instagram. But you have to understand that in today's business environment, you have to have authority. Authority is the most valuable currency you can have. Look, I, I've studied consumer behavior for over 12 years. Great book that came out in January that, that I really focus very heavily on implementing the ideas from is Marketing Rebellion. So if you're wondering why aren't people responding to your emails, why aren't people buying your stuff, why are your leads more expensive than ever on all your paid advertising, why aren't you getting speaker invites, why aren't you, uh, you know, why are so many people bouncing off your website without engaging? Uh, I can answer that. And the reason is you haven't earned their respect yet through authority. Authority comes from three places. Number one, you got to be successful at something. You got to do something. A couple of years ago, you may have been able to get away with, uh, you know, you're one funnel away and, you know, you could just be an expert at being an expert with no results. Today, that's really hard. Why? Because there's so much noise. We've been inundated with experts at being an expert. And so today, it's not enough uh, to be able to just put up a, a sales funnel page and just think that you can solve people's problems without demonstrating you can actually do that. So that's number one. Number two, social proof. People are going to judge the snot out of you based on whether or not it looks like other people engage with you. So if you're brand new, don't worry, look, Rome wasn't built in a day. You're gonna grow it, you're gonna build it, okay? But it really matters today. So I do this, you do this. You get an offer from someone, you find out about a product or service, and then what do you do? You check out their social media, all right? And then we say, well, look, um, this is a social media agency, and they've only got 100 followers on Twitter. Does that communicate something? It absolutely does communicate something. So. Um, it's, uh, it's very important that yes, we build our social proof and we demonstrate it and it's easy for people to find out, yeah, I've got a little bit of a following. So, um, again, agency owners, we see this a lot, um, with agency owners in the past, I think you used to be able to get away with not having 
uh, demonstrating uh, a following, but today it's more and more important. Look, you can build it with zero followers. You can build a business with zero followers. It's just a lot harder. So that's number two. And finally, number three, and that really gets to why I'm doing this video is it's your associations. So when you are quoted in Kiplinger's magazine, CNET, TechCrunch, um, you know, when you are seen on stages, uh, you know, if you speak at conferences, um, there's the visibility component of that. But more important than that is the authority component, the association. Because here's the deal. You wouldn't put like, you know how people put like as seen on and then they put all those logos. Why do they do that? They do that because in order for them to be able to have that logo, that shows that they were able to get into an exclusive club. Not everybody has been quoted in the Washington Post. Okay, <clears throat> so you're you're showing that well, the Washington Post trusted me enough to quote me in the newspaper. Not everybody does that, and generally, you know, even though people say they don't trust the media, we do. Uh, because we trust them as tastemakers, just like we would trust a big influencer uh, as well. But, you know, for talking about like TV, for example, um, so if, if I've been on uh, ABC7 in Chicago, and if you live in Chicago or you're familiar with the city of Chicago and you're familiar with the brand ABC, instantly, here's what happens. Because I have that logo, and because you found out that I've been on ABC7 in Chicago like a handful of times, okay, you're going to take the know, like, and trust that you have for that brand. We're familiar with ABC. Like, it's, it's been around for a while, all right? And so you're going to transfer the know, like, and trust you have with that brand onto me. So similarly, like, if you find out, and I'll do a whole separate video about how I've been able to get on some stages, how I do some public speaking at different events, like how I apply to speak at conferences and why I get selected. Not always, but you know, why I've been able to get selected into some really good stuff. Um, look, I know what it's like to not be selected. I know what it's like to not be on TV. I know what it's like to be obscure in business. And it's not a good feeling. Like, and, and you know, we all start from somewhere, but my job, my mission is to help you to get those things. All right. So. You have to understand, number three is your associations. That's why we do TV. You don't, so I, for example, Pat Flynn, um, I just worked with him when he came in town uh, for PodFast and we got him on the CBS affiliate. Now, Pat's audience is way bigger than the number of people that happen to be watching CBS in Orlando, Florida that particular morning. But why does he do it? Because he does it for the authority. All right, demonstrated? All right, good. Let's continue on. And again, if you want to hear these other subjects, like how I've been able to get uh, interviewed on over 150 podcasts, how I've been able to get the speaking gigs, including paid speaking gigs that I've been able to get. Uh, if you want to learn like how um, we've been able to double revenue for some of our clients, make sure you hit subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's exactly what you're going to get. You're, I'm going to help you increase your authority, your influence, and your revenue. That's what you get when you subscribe. You can always unsubscribe if you feel like I'm not delivering the goods. But if we never find each other again, uh, it's because you didn't subscribe and you didn't get that notification that, hey, Josh is live and he's going to be helping you again pro bono. All right. So again, I've been on media total over 2,000 times, TV 700 times alone. So let's go back in time because at the beginning of my other company, Savings Angel, 12 years ago, uh, I was broke. I had lost two houses. I had just lost my second house. Uh, I had been through a personal bankruptcy and I didn't even have enough money to pay my utilities. And, but I launched Savings Angel, which I thought was a good idea. It was a membership-based website that would help you cut your grocery bill in half. And it was, you know, in theory, it's a great idea. But you know what, everyone has great ideas. What I knew that I needed was exposure. Exposure is everything. You can have the best business idea in the world, but if nobody knows about you and you don't have the respect, then you're just not gonna grow your business. And so we need to help you grow your business. So we've got to get you exposure. So today, of course, yes, you know, you got your social media, you should be doing that. That's mandatory. Okay. But we want to focus on growing your authority so you can get more respect so that your sales funnel works a lot better. When your sales funnel works a lot better because you got the authority, authority is like the grease that moves people through your funnel a lot faster. Like your sales funnel doesn't even need to be that good. 
but because the people respect you so much, they're willing to respond to you no matter what the offer is, right? Okay, so very first TV appearance was in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And this is very important, what I just said right there, because sometimes people come to us at, at Up My Influence and they say, hey, Josh, can you get me on uh, the Today Show? And the answer is, yes, I can. I can tell you how to get there. I can tell you how you can work with the biggest influencers in the world. I can tell you exactly how to do that. But you're not ready for it yet. So if you want to get in TV, the most important thing you need to know is that you need to start really, really, really small. It would not, like if you've never been on TV before and you go to uh, Chicago, New York, LA, Atlanta, CNN, Fox News or whatever, they're not going to book you. I mean, I mean, the chances of that happening, it's Jim Carrey, so you're telling me there's a chance, like one in a million type chance. They're not going to do it. You have to be a really special person in order for a major market or a national brand uh, to say, yeah, okay, you've never been on TV before. Yeah, sure, we'll book you. So what I want you to do is I actually want you to start even before TV, before TV. Let me tell you what you need to have put in place. You need to be doing podcast interviews as a guest where you are refining your story you're getting good at telling your story you're getting good at building your energy right because this is all really important you have to have a certain energy if you want to be on tv they want good guests that are going to be engaging that are going to know how to speak in sound bites right I, matter of fact i just did an interview with andrea jackson i did tv with this morning in fact and i asked her very specifically what makes a really great guest and what makes someone that you're like, no, no thanks, right? And so I have that video and I will share that with you. Uh, make sure you connect with me on social media and make sure you take our authority quiz at upmyinfluence.com because I'm going to send that, you, you'll punch in your email and I will specifically send you this video interview that I did with Andrew Jackson. She's been on, she's been a reporter for, I'm guessing, 20 years. Um, she's a fixture. She's amazing at what she does. And I asked her for some very specific questions on how she books guests and you don't want to miss that. So make sure you take the authority quiz at upmyinfluence.com. I'm going to send this video to you absolutely pro bono, absolutely free. Okay, so uh, so start by being a guest on podcasts. Find the smallest podcast you can, honestly. Like I was just talking with somebody yesterday and he's not been on a lot of podcasts and he was complaining that he was on some podcasts and they weren't very professional. I'm like, man, that is not why, you're brand new at this thing. That's not why you're doing this thing. You're doing your first handful of podcasts. Your first handful of podcasts as a guest, you're going to suck. I'm sorry, but you're just not going to be very good. Okay, But you will get better. So you may as well practice on podcasts that very few people are going to listen to. You're doing it not... You're doing it to serve that audience. There might only be a handful of people, and that's wonderful. And you're doing it to build a relationship with that podcast or whoever they are, even if they have a small, really, really small audience. But you're also doing it. It's so important that you get good at being able to tell your story. Because I, let me tell you, I've been on TV where, uh, and we measure the number of people that will visit our website. And I've done segments where I'll be honest with you, I was really bad. Like I was just, I was really having an off day. It was not a good segment. And sure enough, I can tell you that our traffic, and it's important that we talk about this because a lot of people want to go on TV because they want to make a lot of sales. And so we do a lot of stuff with like media training, for example. And if you have a bad segment, okay, and you're probably going to have a lot of bad segments at the beginning, okay, you're probably not going to make a lot of money. But then if you get really good at this, you get very good at telling your story, you get really good at presenting offers and doing it in a way where you're not selling on TV, but you're telling stories. Uh, that if you get masterful at this, uh, yeah, we have, uh, I mean, it was amazing. Like we did, when I did Chicago, for example, and I'll talk about exactly what I said here in just a minute. Um, we did more traffic in one hour than we did the entire previous month. I mean, that's how huge this can be, uh, even though, again, I, I will tell you that the authority is actually even more valuable than the visibility. All right, but uh, it, it, if you if you get good at being able to tell your story and serve that audience, then honestly, like all your wildest dreams will come true. <laughs> There's a line from Napoleon Dynamite. 
Uh, okay, so Kalamazoo, Michigan, small market in terms of TV markets. They have one TV station. I believe it was uh, WWMT. That's what it was. And I think that that was a CBS affiliate, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, all the rest of the TV stations were up in Grand Rapids, right? But I didn't feel like I was really ready for Grand Rapids, so I pitched the smallest TV station I possibly could. Also, um, again, before you pitch any TV, you need to make sure you've already done some other digital media, and you should have video of you on your site telling your story, teaching something. Why? Because they're going to look for it. I, matter of fact, that's one of the things I asked Andrea about very specifically is what do you look for? And she said, we look for video. Like, I, I'd like to see that this guest is going to do well on TV because we can't take a chance on a bad guest. Honestly, if you're a lousy guest, you'll get blacklisted. Like, they, just, they will remember that you had your chance, you did bad, and you're never going to be invited back again. Nope, nothing, no hard feelings, but... They can't take a chance on bad guests, specifically larger markets, which is why I want you to start with small. So what did I, so I had all that in place. I had video on the side, like, like they could tell, like I had actually already been doing some radio as well. Um, but I would say today, if you're doing podcast interviews, you're doing video, that should be good enough. Then what you want to do is you want to reach out to them. It's really easy. Like, like, yes, we have, you know, through Up My Influence, like we have a database where we have like individual names and phone numbers and email addresses of like individuals. And that's, you know, that, that's a little, that's more effective. But honestly, even if you go right through like the general news, de news desk email address, it can work. Okay. You're usually going to go through like an intern. And so what you're going to need to do is you have to lead with your authority. And then what you do is you have to be able to share something that, that's newsworthy. So please go back and watch my last video that I dis, just did. I'm not going to go into all this right now. Newsjacking. Just watch that video. And that is going to help you know exactly what you should be pitching. And what you're pitching is really critical. Because if you send a pitch, and, and I do this when I speak, I say, okay, Everybody, for the next 10 minutes, I want you to go do PR stuff. And then I just sit there and I watch them kind of squirm and struggle and sweat a little bit. And then I stop them after about 30 seconds. I'm like, okay, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do PR stuff. Okay, but let me ask you, what were you going to do? And, and a lot of people say that what they were going to do is they were going to reach out to a reporter and maybe pitch something that was kind of like selling their product right? Pitching like, oh, you should do a news story about our company because we're just, we're just the bee's knees, right? And, and everybody wants to do that. That pitch would go over like a lead balloon, right? It is not the job of a journalist to promote your business. That's not their job, okay? So instead, like, let's say you have a tree trimming business. I'll give you an example. You've got a tree trimming business and it's hurricane season in Florida. So you would pitch them on a story about, look, you need to trim your trees now. And in fact, here's a couple of, and so you give them some facts and figures. You give them some stories. I've got this couple, you know, they trim their tree. And meanwhile, their next door neighbor lost the entire tree. But because they trimmed their tree back, they would be willing to go on camera and tell their story. They've got visuals, right? You, you've got visuals ready to go. So like, this is the kind of thing. So like, let's say that you are a, um, let's say you're a, a Facebook ads agency or something like that, or uh, I'm trying to come up with something that would be like really challenging. This would be really challenging. Okay. Sometimes, no, but let me give you this example. Let's say you're a life coach and like, uh, like I had one client, he was like, well, I help people uh, discover their whole soul and, you know, love themselves from the inside. All right. Um, that's good but it's not really sellable for TV. Uh, and so uh, that's gonna be hard to pitch. Um, if you have a hook, however, a hook would be like the Kardashians are in the news again, uh, you know, or that uh, Catch Me Aside, how about that girl? Like whatever, like she had like some kind of blow up on an airplane again, I, who knows, right? And that's your story. 
And so you, and people are like, what? Oh, I don't want to sell out like that. Look, that's just your hook. Like you have to hook into something that people are already talking about. Okay. And so you send an email to the producer and you tell them, look, you know, they're going to be talking about this subject. Again, go watch my news jacking video. All right. And so, uh, so that's your hook. Then you have a unique perspective on it. That's the next step is you can't just say, uh, I use this example, like let's say you're a historian and uh, it's Adolf Hitler's birthday and your story is, well, Adolf Hitler was kind of a jerk. Like, whoa, wow, way to go out on a limb on that story, right? And like, that's not an original idea. Like we're all kind of agreed he was a little bit of a jerk, right? And so uh, we're not fans of, of, of his choices. And so instead, you need to come up with a unique point of view. What you want to evoke from the reporter is a response that's kind of like, oh, wow, that's actually kind of interesting. I never knew that, or I didn't know that. I didn't think about that. That's the kind of angle that you want to come up with. You want to evoke that response. That makes you unique. And when you're unique, then you're memorable. If you're just a generalist on like Facebook ads, forget it. But if you can talk about like the personalities at Facebook and, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is in trouble with the board again and blah, 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 and the drama. And like you like you can, and you've got a unique point of view about like, oh, let me tell you the inside story. Uh, like that makes you unique because not many people can talk about that sort of thing. But that's the kind of thing that might come up in the news more often. Um, you know, algorithm changes might be a story, but generally not. It's kind of, that's more of a, a story for those, uh, you know, you know, those people at the nerd table. Um, and so, by the way, also, uh, when you're pitching, you have to know who that audience is because there might be something that you might nerd down a little bit, like algorithm changes might be appropriate for like social media examiner. But honestly, like major media, not going to care about it. And by the way, I should say there's media you do for visibility to get in front of your target audience. And then there's media you do for authority. You need to be doing both because if you're always just at the nerd table, that's great, but you're not really getting the respect. You're not getting the validation from the outside world. That's why Pat Flynn went on CBS in Orlando because it's validation, not just for him, but for his tribe. The outside world recognizes that I'm a spokesperson for this industry. And you need that validation from the outside world or the general media. Does this all make sense? I hope you're taking notes because what I'm telling you right here, this is 2,000 TV, no, 2,000 media appearances worth of experience. This is $6 million, $7 million worth of revenue uh, because of what I've learned and how I've been able to leverage this into a way that has really helped me in business. This has been a concept that has helped me from going from bankrupt and foreclosure and not being able to pay my utility bill to be able to make six figure, have six figure months. This stuff matters. Authority matters. So again, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to know what your authority score is where, right now, and it's going to improve over the, ne over the next few months as I become your mentor, as I teach you more and more stuff, pro bono, as you take our free authority quiz at upmyinfluence.com slash quiz, okay? And it's all free. It's all pro bono. When you're on that list, when it's available in, in, in May, I'm also going to give you a free master class. And that master class is it's going to be it's a master class in growing your authority. Exactly what you need to do step by step so that you can improve every metric in business. Let's move on from Kalamazoo because now that I had Kalamazoo in the bag on WWMT, then I was able to go to Wood TV in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a bigger market. Okay, and you might be thinking Grand Rapids, Michigan. I, Maybe I've heard of that. Like, you're still thinking, like, Josh, this is still small potatoes, man. Listen, stop with the big deal itis. Okay, that's like my conversation I had with this person yesterday. The big deal in media, the big deal in growing a business is the accumulation of all of the little deals. Okay, when you can say, when you can demonstrate that you've been on media, you've been in the media over 50 times or 80 times or hundred times or a couple hundred times. Okay. Now 
it's pretty much impossible to argue with your authority. It's possible that you might have got, um, you know, one TV segment in, uh, you know, Detroit, Michigan or something like that. I've done Detroit media as well, right? But if it's only one time and that was four years ago, yeah, people are probably wondering, yeah, but what are you doing lately? So it's important that you maintain relevance, which is why even though, like, I don't know that I have a lot to gain personally from going on this morning and talking about, uh, you know, uh, prescription drug savings opportunities, uh, you know, for savings angel. I mean, we don't sell anything around that. We, we're a blog, but I do it anyway because I need to make sure that you know that I, tr I take this very seriously. And yes, I still want to serve that audience. I still want to make sure that I'm, you know, investing in my relationships with influencers and media. Okay, so it's very, this is so critical. When you get TV, you need to capture that video yourself. You might be thinking, oh, they're just going to get a copy of it and they're going to put it on their website. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. They might say, oh, yeah, sure, we'll get you a copy. Let me tell you from experience, 700 TV appearances, let me tell you that when they tell you that they're going to get you a copy of that video, they're lying. They're not going to do it. Right? I would say better than 50% of the time, they forget. It's just they're, they're producing live TV. They're not going to remember to do it. Right? And if they do, like, you cannot risk this. Like I said, the most important thing that you're getting from this, authority is worth more than the visibility. You need to capture that. So let me show you what you need. Here we go. Here is specific information. You need a digital antenna. You need a USB capture device. This one is the, for a Mac, it's the ITV Hybrid from Elgato. All right, that, you could use that specifically or any other capture device. Um, I've got a couple of other ones, a video capture device. I, they're still in the plastic just in case this one, I have a backup just in case for whatever reason that one stops working, okay? You need to capture it yourself. So uh, you take digital HD antenna, record it on your computer, and you get a copy yourself, right? And then you put that up on YouTube or any other video hosting platform. Um, can you do this? Yes. The only time you can't do this is if they make you sign something that says that you're not going to do it. Does that, does that make sense? So there is only one, and I'll tell you, in 700 some TV appearances, I've only had that happen once where they said, Josh, you cannot take this video and repurpose it. So um, in, in, in that case, uh, you know, I wasn't able to do that. So, uh, but in every other case, you got to be responsible for this because when that video is on your, so again, this is where everybody screws this up. They think I'm going to do it. I'm going to, oh, they're going to put my name in lights and all my wildest dreams are going to come true. No, you're going to actually, you're probably going to be pretty disappointed for most of the TV appearances you do in terms of how many sales you get right out of the gate. However, you get that video, you put it on your website, you embed it, it's easy to find, people can find you, they can see you've been on TV, okay? All of a sudden your conversion rate goes from 3% to 5%. Does that make a big difference long-term in business? Yeah, absolutely it does, okay? Is that worth all the time and effort to go on TV in order to get that 2% improvement in conversion rate? If you like making money, it does. So, <laughs> so you should definitely capture all your own video. Embed it, share it, promote it, social media, share it nonstop, like for the next year, uh, you should be sharing that every so often on social media. You need to embed that everywhere, like video, and needs to be accessible everywhere. All right, so Grand Rapids. I was able to approach Grand Rapids, and I led, and I included a link to demonstrate to them that I had already been on TV, and it was an okay segment. I was not good at first. Uh, thankfully, I'd had a lot of practice by doing this on radio, which was a little easier because I went to a, my first media appearance ever was a small radio station in Holland, Michigan, a local Christian broadcaster. And, uh, you know, at the beginning, I was really terrible. Uh, but I did that a bunch of times, then built up the courage to go to Kalamazoo. Then I pitched Wood TV in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Did Wood, did a couple of the other TV stations there. And uh, so I just kept on pitching them. Again, same formula I talked about earlier, had a hook. Um, don't be salesy. If a reporter, producer can smell sales on your breath, they are going to turn 
and run. And let me tell you, as a journalist myself, so I've been a syndicated newspaper columnist now for over eight years, and I'll tell you that probably 85, 90% of all the pitches I get, they're just salesy. They're just trying to sell their stuff. So if you can be a little bit different and, and even go so far in some cases, especially like when you work with influencers or you're trying to like guest blog or whatever the nonsense you're trying to do, all right, go so far as to say, you know, look, I, you know, I don't need any credit, links back or anything like that. Like I just, I'm a total geek on this subject and I would, it would be an honor to serve your audience. Like um, I wouldn't necessarily say that with TV. Um, I would just make sure that you give them the facts and bullet points for the pitch. Um, and, you know, when you're, keep, keep plugging into Up My Influence and, and you'll get more specifics on, you know, you know the language and that sort of thing. Uh, we don't have time to go into everything uh, on this. But again, if you reach out um, and just be human, just be natural, just serve, lead with wanting to do, uh, you know, provide value. Uh, and by the way, if you have specific questions, you can always comment below in this video and I will go and answer those questions uh, and after the fact, even after this live video has ended. All right, so then from Grand Rapids, uh, and I would tell you, I probably did Grand Rapids Media about eight to 10 times. Kalamazoo, I actually only did once. Grand Rapids, I did about eight to 10 times. And then what did I do? Well, natural next step is ABC7 and WGN. Uh, and I think there was one other one in Chicago. Uh, and I just pitched them in the exact same format by then. By the time I'm reaching out to Chicago, I was able to show them my video page of all the news stories uh, that I had been featured in. And by then, like, it was weird. Like, we even had, like, uh, like a, a TV station in Connecticut did a news story about one of our clients. Like, like I don't even know. It's weird. Like, once you start doing this, uh, I think, oh, yeah, they reached out to us because they did a search. Once you start doing this, you become known as a, as, a, as a subject matter expert that is TV ready, that's media ready. And once you kind of, you know, people can, you know, media can figure you out in being able to do that, you'll get opportunities that just come out of the woodwork. And it's awesome. Um, so, yeah, so pitch ABC7, drove to Chicago, uh, did that segment. I was so nervous before that one because that's a big deal. And let me tell you, we made a lot of money from that one. I'm not going to kid you. Uh, we did thousands of dollars of sales, thousands of dollars of sales, uh, just in one day alone on a $20 product. So just to give you an idea of kind of volume. This is what can happen for you. Now, from Chicago, then we moved down to Orlando, started working with Fox 35. Uh, that one, uh, I found advocate. Heidi Hatch on Fox 35 was a fan of couponing. I found I found that out by doing research. Savings Angel, we're all about couponing and saving money at the grocery store. So I found my ally. I said, Heidi, thanks so much for the shout out on couponing. You know, I've actually done Chicago TV, done you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, you lead with your authority. And then I said, look, I'd love to come on and talk about, uh, you know, how to uh, save hundreds of dollars at the grocery store using coupons from the Sunday paper or whatever. And, you know, again, it was just a very friendly, um, you know, you want to you want to aim for professional courtesy. Don't be overly stiff. Otherwise, it's just weird. Um, but don't be overly familiar as well. You need to kind of strike a balance in there when you reach out. Heidi said, sure. Uh, because I had done this enough times now when I did my TV segment with her, and you can actually go to youtube.com slash savings angel and if you go to my first handful of videos i think you'll find my very first tv segment with heidi i was not real great it was not it was not my best tv performance i knew nervous new environment new opportunity whatever it was but you can go back and you can watch that and it will give you hope that if you feel like you're not good at tv it, look you just got to do it anyway your your first TV segment's not going to be right. It was just stiff. Like, you could tell a big difference. Like, go back and watch my first TV segments and then fast forward to some of my newer ones and you see, like, okay, yeah, Josh, Josh has gotten a little bit better at this. Okay, you'll get better as well. I promise you, 700 TV segments in, you'll get a little bit better at this. All right. So, um, so what that ended up turning into 
is to say, well, Heidi, um, I actually have a lot of TV stories that I could do, and I could actually come in every week, and I could share the best you know, four or five uh, deals that you could get, and we'll actually give you the coupon codes, we'll put them right on the uh, Fox 35 website, and they're like, yeah, that sounds great, because it's an opportunity for us to drive time. Like, I'm thinking win-win. I'm thinking about what's in it for them, and that was part of my pitch, and guys, I became a weekly segment expert, and I've been on to, I will, I'm pretty sure that I have been, as an expert, I've been on TV more times than anybody in the history of Fox 35. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure uh, that someone told me that. I know K KMG, uh, their program, their C that's a CBS affiliate, uh, they told me I've already, they because they, they said, Josh, we don't normally ever repeat experts. Um, but I can tell you that you officially are now the experts been on air more times than anybody else. So they got hold a couple of records. Not sure about that. Um, News 13 was the same thing. Um, introduction to a reporter uh, and just started serving. And I, look, I would rather go for that weekly segment where it's like, I'm not selling savings angel. I'm just providing value. I take the segment, put it on social because social is where you're going to make all your business because that's where you can put your link in front of everybody. Right. And so, uh, but it's really nice when people see you on TV, people believe TV, the people believe what they see in video, particularly when it's on TV, they assume that, okay, well, they must have vetted Josh. So he must be a legit guy. Uh, and then as a result, we, I mean, our sales went from here. Once I started doing TV, I mean, it was, I mean, it was crazy. Like it's, it's really fun being a part of a business where it just kind of takes off. And you're like, Oh my gosh, like I, can't even identify with making this kind of money. You know, where I'm like taking like, you know, like these deposits and like giving my wife a check for $20,000. And I'm like, this is just like what we made. I, I mean, I don't know what we're supposed to do with this money, but you know, that's really fun to be in that circumstance. And I want that exact same thing for you. Now, again, from Fox, uh, I then started doing syndicated stuff so there was a TV program originated from Orlando called The Daily Buzz. I did that show a couple times. Uh, and then we started partnering with Gray Television and we reached out to a program called Moms Every Day. And in 75 TV markets, uh, two to four times a month, we did this for three years, I had a TV segment that would air in 75 cities. And it's because I had been investing in getting good at this. Does this make sense? So it's a process that, that you do this. Um, so hopefully by sharing my journey, you have gotten some insight into how this journey could be possible for you. And I'm telling you, um, just you know, my own experience, you know, to go from broke to be able to make those kind of money, those twenty thousand dollar deposits in those six figure months, um, it's very, very humbling. And I, had, I really believed in this. I wanted to serve that audience because I felt like I had a message that could positively impact the world. I knew that my product or service could really change lives. It could make, improve the lifestyle of so many people. Today with Up My Influence, it's the same thing. Like if I don't do what I do, business owners are gonna stagnate and fail. So I want you to succeed. Next step, go to upmyinfluence.com slash Quiz. Take our free pro bono quiz. It's going to give you your authority score. You have a score today, and you need to know what that score is. And you might not like it, okay? And you might say, "Well, Josh, this is I don't agree with the you know how you're scoring me, and I don't think it's fair." No, it's probably not fair. It's not fair that people judge you superficially, but they are. And so when people and, and when people are not responding to your emails, when you're not getting invites to appear on podcasts as a subject matter expert, when you're not getting invited to be a, a speaker on stage at conferences, um, if you're successful in business, you should be getting those things. And if you're not, that, that, that's an indicator that there's something wrong with your online branding, your personal branding, your personal authority. I am going to help you fix that free of charge. When you've taken the quiz, I will announce to you when we're, we're still working on it right now, but we're developing an entire authority makeover. It's, it's an authority transformation masterclass. This is going to be available in May. If you've taken the quiz, I'm going to notify you about it. So make sure you take the quiz. I'm not going to spam or sell you or anything like that. Just 
honestly, I, I got, I'm here to change lives. I'm, I, I, you know, I know what a difference it made for me. I want that same impact for you. Take the quiz. I will send you an invite when we open up the doors on the free masterclass. And it's an authority transformation masterclass. It is absolutely going to change your business forever. It's going to improve your authority forever when you learn these principles and start working on these things. I'm going to help you completely pro bono. I'm going to be your department when it comes to authority and influence. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If it was, it was helpful, please comment below on your questions, what you liked, what you didn't like. Let me know what I didn't answer. You're like, man, I, I thought he was going to talk about this. He didn't even tell me about that. Like, let me know what was what it was that you were hoping to hear about. Comment below. Give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that this was helpful for you. And... Uh, finally, the greatest compliment that you could offer would be to share this with a friend. Share with a fellow business owner that you believe it. That man, oh my gosh, if they could just get on TV, that'd be so awesome for them. I know it'd be a life changer. I promise to do everything in my power to make you look good. All right. So thank you so much for watching. That concludes this live end stream. Thank you so much for. Ah, I didn't even answer all the questions. Okay, I will go back. I've got I, like my team. Like I've got a bunch of questions. I think I answered everything. But I'm going to go and review all the questions that we got. Thank you for sending all those in in advance to those of you who are on my email list. I will go through, uh, review those questions one last time. Make sure I've answered them in the comments below if I didn't answer them in this video, but I'm pretty sure I covered everybody's questions. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful Easter weekend. That's where I'm recording this. Take care.